Le Mans this year was less of a disappointment than it was last year. For me, it was really important that I went back there. And so that was the first challenge, going back there. And then uh, I found a rhythm there, finally. For an hour and a half, I had the best time ever in Le Mans. And then I made a really um, silly mistake, tried to avoid track limits. Oh, oh, oh look again, and that's a big hit. That's a big hit, yeah. Well, it's so now, you know, for me, it's about I want to go back there next time, you know, and I and I believe I can perform well there. All right, so we've established you're doing very well. Just had a massage. Ready for the weekend ahead? Uh, yeah, um, it's always uh, a special treat being here in Spa, uh, one of the all-time great tracks. A lot of history here, tradition, and it's a challenging track. Each corner is exciting, interesting, different. So yeah, looking forward to, to the race here. And this is your fourth season of ELMS now, so... Yes. How's that experience going to help you this weekend on your journey? I think it's just, you know, another... It's, it's more time in the car, another track that I've been to now a few times. So just each time have more, more time in the car, more experience, gain um, more confidence. Um, not too much confidence, uh, but yeah, just, just, just experience. So last time out in Aragon, you did have a little bit of an unlucky moment, and I feel like your season so far has been categorized by these unlucky moments that have not really been your fault and you've not been able to do anything with. Do you think your luck could turn around in the second half of the season? You never know about stuff like that. I mean, like you said, you know, we looked like we had a solid third, perhaps second place in Barcelona. Again, we looked very strong for a podium in Le Castellet. And obviously then we got a third place in Aragon. It would be, you know, looking at the championship now, it would be a, a very different story for us. Um, but that's behind. There's nothing you can really do about it. We just stick with the same sort of, you know, approach to the weekend game plan. You can never foresee those sort of things. Uh, it was great in Aragon that, you know, we managed the recovery drive and it was a very exciting race. So. Let's see, hopefully things turn around a little bit for the, the remainder of the season. What would you say are some of your other highlights in, in your time in ELMS so far? You know, I think it's coming to tracks like this, you know, coming to tracks like Monza, Portimao I've always enjoyed. Again, it's a very um, um, challenging track with the different undulations and uh, fast corners. Just. The experience that we're having as a team, you know, collectively, it's just a, I, you know, get to learn a lot about oneself through the struggles and challenges. Um, so just the whole experience is something that, uh, you know, I'll, I'll um, always cherish, really. Le Mans this year was a bit of a disappointment for you. And how do you reflect on that and use that disappointment to keep pushing yourself when you're in the car? Well, to be honest with you, Le Mans this year was less of a disappointment than it was last year. And so, you know, the slogan is fail and then fail better the next time, I suppose. Uh, it, you know, for me, it was all about going back there. I had such a, a rough experience in 2023, 20, uh, you know, just, I mentally sort of, you know, just sort of imploded and never managed to come out of that down, downward spiral. And so for me, it was really important that I went back there and so that was the first challenge, going back there and then to sort of find a rhythm there. I never found a rhythm there. And I, again, I was struggling in the last session, which was supposed to be my second last session, but it th turned into the last session because I went for the triple stint. Uh, I found a rhythm there, finally. And so that, for an hour and a half, I had the best time ever in Le Mans. And I, I really understood what was special about that place and, and just... I, I just really enjoyed that hour and a half. I was free of thought. I, uh, I you know, it was hard to describe. And then I made a really um, silly mistake, trying to avoid track limits. Just a lapse in concentration, you know, and obviously paid the price for it. But, you know, there was obviously massive disappointment in that moment and afterwards and you've got the whole team working so hard to, to help you achieve certain things and um, I did feel certainly bad for them but I, I did feel like I had broken through a certain barrier there. So now, you know, for me it's about 
I want to go back there next time, you know, and I, and I believe I can perform well there. Uh, it's just there was a mental block there that I needed to, to break through. And do you think that's something you, you have to overcome at every track that you go to, that mental barrier, and then once you get past that, you're in the flow, you're in the rhythm, and you can really settle in and enjoy yourself? Not so much every track. You know, some tracks I just arrive at and just have a feel for it. Is Spa one of these tracks? The first time I came here in Sports Cup, I had one of my best races. Then, like I say, in the LMS seasons, I haven't really, I think, performed to my full potential here. Uh, but again, loved it. Monza was one of those tracks again where I was so like thrilled to be there but again didn't perform where I felt like I could and then I did last season and then I had, a, had another accident there uh, but up until that point I was like okay finally I'm starting to find the flow of this track it just depends some tracks come easier and uh, and just sort of instinctively find a flow quicker um, so yeah Patrick Dempsey, uh, owner of Dempsey Proton, helped you in your journey to Le Mans. You obviously are very similar in that you have very similar careers outside of racing and you have that same passion once you get you know, to a racetrack. How has he helped you in that journey? Well, he started it all for me with Porsche. You know, um, I'm obviously because I was a race fan, I'd seen his achievements in Le Mans. And then we were just on a, on a plane, I think it was either from LA to London or vice versa and he was in the seat behind me and I just I was like hey listen you know I just want to say you know massive achievement and um, then we just started talking about um, racing and you know I told him that it was sort of my ambition to go to Le Mans and race uh, in GT endurance and he was like look you know he was like uh, I have a contact at Porsche uh, after that flight we exchanged details and he he hooked me up you know that was really the start and um, he was at obviously Le Mans both years last year this year you know just you know what, what was good about it is he, <laughs> he understands you know the position you know where I was sort of pretty tough on myself in the first year and he was like relax it's okay you know it's like a lot to take on the first year you know just a lot of words of encouragement and do you think he was then a big reason as to why you chose Porsche? Because obviously there are tons of manufacturers that are in incredible in this series. You know, you've got the Aston Martins, the Ferraris. Is that the reason that you ended up kind of gravitating towards Porsche and Proton competition? Yes, I mean, you know, he said, look, I've done this. I've been in the same position as you. He said that, you know, it's, it's, it's a journey, you know, and, and there's a challenge there. And Porsche are a great um, manufacturer to go with because they'll put you, put the, put you through the paces correctly. And then obviously his relationship with the Proton and the Dempsey Proton competition, there was a perfect sort of fit for me. Um, outside of that, I've always, you know, been a fan of Porsche. You know, I was born in Germany. My dad was a Porsche fan. I always had the Matchbox 911 car. Um, so there was sort of, you know, there was an affinity there in some respect. And, but yeah, it was his connection with Porsche, how they approached it. And so that really, you know, started the ball rolling, like I say. So, the Road to Le Mans series that you were a part of, it's been great content, obviously, for fans of racing already, um, for, for new fans alike. Do you ever watch the, the footage back and, and can you see how much of an impact that's had? For sure I watch it, you know, um, working closely with uh, Sebastian Borowski and uh, the, the team that are shooting it, um, very often I'll see cuts before they actually, you know, um, go out. And we always discuss about things, and it was always a very open um, discussion about, you know, the fact that we wanted to show everything, even the bits that I would rather not, you know, maybe, you know, reveal. But, you know, that's what makes it, I think, so interesting and, and, and to show the challenges of it all. Um, I, I watch it, you know, once is enough for me uh, with most things that I do that I have to sort of watch myself. Um, uh, but it would, I suppose, be a at some point be interesting for me to watch them again and sort of see that journey and and where we started you know because you know from everyone to obviously proton competition of you know amazing team so lucky to be a part of that but you know sebastian the filming team you know we've been on this journey together now for five years and you feel like everyone's super invested um so yeah it's 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 something it's a nice thing to have for me to you know look back on this whole experience what is your most memorable moment in racing though so far because it's not over yet what's been the best experience i suppose you know being in the podium's nice i mean i feel like when we got that podium in portimao 
it was such it was a season where we were really knocking on the door again you know getting very close to the podium but never really making it and you know again like i say you feel it with the mechanics the engineers they're putting so much energy and work right into you know getting the car across the line and so when we got that podium in portimao it felt like there was a, you know, it, it just felt like there was a great relief. Certainly, I felt a great relief, but it, 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 you know, a validation as well. I felt it, you know, throughout the team. So that that would have to go as a plus, and the last podium in Aragon because I feel like it was a long time coming too. Okay, here's a bit of a thinker. Do you believe that you've reached your full potential when it comes to racing? No, absolutely. I, I don't feel, believe I've reached my full potential in anything in, in acting. Certainly, I think you know it's a never-ending. Um, learning curve and um, you know you obviously you know strive for for the best you can do all the time but I feel like I always fall short uh, so no I think it's a never-ending journey in most things in life I feel like that's a top mentality attitude that <laughs> well I think it's a reality you know um, you, you know I just think that that's the way it is and and also it, you know it keeps that sort of it keeps it fun and exciting and keeps the, the passion alive Okay, alternatively, do you have any regrets in your racing career so far? No, I don't really sort of regrets or think, you know, I, I don't have much time for them in general in my life either. I think, you know, things happen in life. I think the best thing to do is sort of analyze it, you know, look at it, learn from it and move forward. Um, so no regrets. So what else are you wanting to achieve then? I mean, obviously it would be great to get a win, but is there anything else that would make you feel fulfilled in terms of, you know, oh, this is exactly how I wanted to end my racing career. This is the one thing that I wanted and I've achieved it. I think be faster, <laughs> uh, you know. <laughs> no, you know, I think, cause I thought like this year would be, you know, my last year, but it's such an addictive thing. Uh, and I feel like that exactly what you said, that idea of like, you set one goal and then, you know, there's a new goal and it's just sort of like that idea of improvement. And certainly this sport for me has taught a lot about myself in terms of how to deal with disappointments. And when you really feel like you're rock bottom, sort of confidence wise, mentally, how you go about rebuilding yourself and, and, and going for it again and, um, and not being, you know, afraid of, of failure and not being stifled by those those negative thoughts to, you know, sort of punch through and and get up and, and, and try again, you know. And that concept of not being afraid, I think fear is a really interesting thing in the in the world of motorsports, or maybe fear is not the right word. How do you use those emotions to kind of push forward in the context of racing? Well, you know, I guess the example for me would be after Le Mans, it was so like, I, I was quite, uh, you know, fearful to go back because I had such a rough experience. So then it was just about regrouping at home for me, exercise, training, getting into a training program, visualizing, you know, the track and things in the track. <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, you know, that, that, that was something that I did. I probably, I did think about, should I see, you know, is there something, you know, in a mental coach that would help me sort of, you know, help me if my, my mind starts to go to negative places again. But I didn't get around to doing that, so I just worked myself, like had the memory of what it was like to have that feeling and then visualize the track every day and just train and try and sort of get a positive um, mental headspace, really. Um, and to just, you know, again, I think a lot of those sort of fear things or insecurities are ego related, so try and sort of dissolve the ego and and just try and enjoy and just try and prepare as best I can and then you know give it give it my all and that mindset is really important in you know both aspects of your career how does your mindset in racing change in comparison to your mindset when you're on set well I think you know that the big difference is that I've been you know I started acting when I was 17 so it's you know that's kind of where i feel most comfortable it's you know it's the, a lot of hours in front of the camera and i always think you know there's no secret sauce to any of this stuff i think it's just you know the the work you put in the hours you put in obviously this is an expensive sport it's difficult to put the hours in so you find alternative ways i did a lot of shifter karting go-karting going back to that rediscovering that love you know of racing and where it all started for me um 
so with with my with the acting world definitely there's pressure there you know there's the same idea that you you land you're in a big team of people you got to work together well quickly and you you know there's there's an objective there and there's a lot of money and there's a lot of pressure but i'm more used to that that um that world this is a this is a new world for me so I, a lot of catching up how do you deal with the pressure of having big names on the racetrack with you as well as having big names on set with you is it the same kind of wide-eyed stance no i guess the big names on the track that was one of the things that was kind of stifling me a little bit the first year in le mans um because i was like God, don't take out one of the pro teams you know here you're on the track with the, some of the best drivers in the world and i was like whatever you do don't crash into one of them you know and that's obviously not a, the right mindset to be in and um and so that that worked as a bit of a negative to be honest in, the, in that first year um I didn't have it this year and I feel like I drive pretty cleanly anyway for the most part. Um and then you know working on set when you work with some you know he heroes that you know I've had like you know working with Viggo Mortensen or working with John Malkovich I'm sort of like wow cool you know you get you get quite excited by that and then you start going to work and then you're working and sort of you know it becomes m more normalized but uh but certainly at the beginning I still get you know those feelings of people that I look up to in anything in sport or at work. In terms of acting and motorsport and also your family, how do you manage to balance it all because you put a lot on your plate but you make it work? Well, when I'm when I'm doing the racing season, I technically I can I, I can't really go to work because I won't get insured. You know, so like I would start I could unless I can film something in a 3-week period between races, I can't really work. You know, Alicia works and I look after our, our little boy and um, and do the racing, and then in the down season, hopefully I can pick up a job and she stays at home and we kind of work it like that. So it's actually not too bad. It's enjoyable though, spending time with the kids, spending time at home. Yeah, no, I mean uh, it's a real luxury, you know, that I'm 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 able to spend so much time with my son, especially in these early years. It's it's fantastic. I love it. Do you think you would encourage him to pursue racing in the future? I think you know. For me, I, I'll just expose him to as much stuff as possible, and whatever he's he's uh, you know excited or interested in, uh, I'll support him. Uh, I won't push anything. Um, I mean, he he does love cars and trucks and planes and any sort of sort of machinery, but but no, it's just about really sort of exposing a, a, as many things, you know, music, whatever it is, books, uh, this sport, and seeing what what he chooses. So I'll finish this off by asking you, what is next for you? in terms of this crazy racing career? I'm not sure yet. Um, you know, we've sort of finished this journey with the Road to Le Mans, um, but I want to keep racing, so I'm not sure. I'm, I'm working on a couple of things. But the love is still there. You want to continue? Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, well, we would love to continue having you in the paddock. Oh, thank Wonderful you. Wonderful smile. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank you. Cheers.